What is the significance of what happened with the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and our president in Singapore? Well, joining me now is the former chairman of the Asia Pacific Subcommittee in the House, Matt Salmon. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Mike. So your perspective had to be different than a lot of ours because this was your area of expertise when you were in the Congress. So right. from your perspective, how significant was it to see Kim Jong-un at a table with Donald Trump in Singapore? Incredibly significant. You know, time will tell uh, how it's going to all turn out. But uh, it was uh, important to have the dialogue. Uh, I think it was important to uh, let him know ahead of time that you're not going to get the meeting. Uh, if you keep talking about death to everybody and, and uh, lobbing missiles uh, in the ocean. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was glad to see that the dialogue happened. Uh, this is a wily guy. Uh, he's not to be trusted. He's, uh, he's duped other presidents. And my hope is that we take a trust but verify kind of attitude and that we should not be relinquishing uh, any, uh, you know, of the... Uh, the uh, issues that we've got going on with them until we see some action. Well, we've seen him do some pretty horrible things to his own people. We've Killed his own his, uncle. Yeah, barbaric things that yeah. they've done. But at least now he's changed his behavior. He may not have changed his mind. He may not have changed his heart about America or the rest of the world. But at least for now, he's changed his behavior. How important... Their economy is on its knees. I mean, the people over there are starving. They're in a, a really bad situation. And it's because of the sanctions that we've had in place, the sanctions that uh, other countries have, uh, have put in place because of our efforts, the United Nations. And, um, you know, look, if, if he will uh, relinquish his desire uh, for nuclear weapons and completely uh, get rid of them, uh, it's going to be good for his people. And I think that he's got to understand that. Well, I think the change in behavior also was, like you said, because as people are starving, the, the sanctions right. have been working. At the end of World War II, I was just in Europe. The Germans didn't change their attitude, or the Nazis hadn't changed their attitude toward Americans. But when it came time to surrender to Eisenhower, their behavior changed because they were forced into that change. And really, that's all we care about. Right. We don't care why they do it, just that they do it. And if he gets rid of all nuclear weapons on his, uh, uh, on his continent, then we'll be in a lot better spot. The whole so world will. Do you believe that... It's possible, with your, with your knowledge of the, the region, is it possible for us to verify? Will, if he allows yeah. that, we'll be able to oh, verify yeah. that he's actually taking the steps he says he'll oh, take. Oh, yeah, it's entirely possible that we verify. Um, and it's probably going to be something that we want to do in cooperation with other countries. Uh, two countries that probably have the most to lose if this doesn't work out are Japan and South Korea. And so we'd want them to be part of the process. We Obviously, China is going to probably have to be part of that process. But yes, it is, it is totally uh, verifiable. And I think that if we uh, can strike a deal uh, where we can verify that he has uh, gotten rid of all nuclear uh, desires and aspirations and all weapons, that um, there's certain things that we can do that will make their uh, people be in a lot better place. You've been dealing with this regime with, with your position in the Congress, for what you did anyway. Are you, re are you surprised at the change in behavior? I am, and, and uh, you know, it was uh, probably one of the top two or three biggest threats worldwide uh, that we face as a nation, existential threats, uh, and to our allies, uh, you know, serious, serious threats. And uh, presidents for, you know, decades have been working on fixing this conundrum and to no avail. And so um, seeing this, to me, was a very, very positive development. But yet again, you know, time's going to tell if he's just playing another game or if he's, he's really sincere about it this time. But the one thing I think that brought him to the table was that um, Trump didn't suffer fool with him. Uh, you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't play patty cake with him. He played tough. And uh, I think with a guy like, uh, like him and his administration, uh, that's what it took. Um. I want to talk about phase two of this because getting to the table was one accomplishment. Right. But now the diplomacy, which I know you're the expert in when it comes to the Japanese and the South Koreans and the protection part of this, the huge uh, investment and stake that the Chinese have in this. So yeah. next segment, I want to talk about what we do next. What are the next steps in this and how these other nations are brought in for the next possibilities? Great. So Matt Salmon is with us. He was the Asia Pacific chairman for the House Committee and really um, knows more about this region than most people do. We'll be back in a moment. 
We're back with Matt Salmon, who was the chairman of the Asia Pacific Committee in the House. And uh, so your perspective on this is pretty global. So let's talk about the global part of this, because it's not just the U.S. and North Korea. It involves the protection of the South Koreans and the Japanese. It involves the investment with the Chinese. What happens next now to keep him at the table and to keep his word? And how do those other countries get what they need out of this? Well, Secretary Pompeo has already been following up on the diplomacy front, to, you know, keep the irons in the fire and, and everything moving forward. So I think that's part of it. But the other big part of it, I think, is to uh, involve China at a much bigger level. Uh, as uh, we were talking about off the air, uh, about 80 percent plus of the food and the energy that North Korea receives come from China. And if they put the same kind of sanctions on that we have, uh, then, I mean, they'd be done. They'd be broken. But conversely, if, if let's jump forward that if this works, if there is the introduction of North Korea into the worldwide economy, if there's a prosperous North Korea, that's got to be a huge benefit to the Chinese economy. Big time. And if there was a peaceful reunification of North and South Korea, like happened with, uh, you know, East and West Germany, um, they would become a real uh, economic force. You see how successful uh, South Korea has been right uh, in every way, shape, and form. Uh, in North Korea, they even have more assets, uh, you know, more natural resources, and so uh, they could be uh, a real economic boom uh, to the area. And 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 China knows that. Uh, you were just there a little over a year ago, and so this is not a new conversation that the president came up with, but he was the one to kind of get over the hump. But the idea of the unification of North and South Korea and the, about a long time. and the end of nukes. But right. now that this is on the table, how do the South Koreans feel safe? How do the, ja uh, the Japanese especially feel safe? Um, I don't what think happens they, I next? don't think they do feel safe Not yet. yet, but what happens moving forward to try to make that happen? So if, if we lift the sanctions and allow them to start moving back into the, with the rest of the world economically, we don't want to see what the Iranians are doing around the world. Right, playing games. Yeah, so right. what is it that we can do to get the assurances for the Japanese? Well, I, I think, again, it goes back to having a, a, a program of trust but verify that uh, we're able to go in and, and ascertain that they have actually not, not just stopped their nuclear program, but that they have uh, gotten rid of uh, all nuclear materials. And I think that once we're able to do that, then, you know, these other countries will be able to breathe a sigh of relief. But the other problem, Mike, is they, they don't even need nuclear weapons to, you know, decimate Seoul. Right, they're right they on the could, border. They're right on the border, and they could decimate them with conventional weapons, and they could do it in a nanosecond. Do you bring the Japanese in as part of the verification team? You have so to. it's Japanese no, eyes on the verification. I think you bring in the Japanese and the South Koreans and the Chinese. Remember the six party talks right. uh, that uh, were involved? I think that you bring them in uh, and uh, uh, make sure that it's verifiable. And uh, once you're able to ascertain that it's actually happening, then, then and only then you start lifting the sanctions. Best case scenario then, if this were to move in the direction everybody wants it to, what's the time frame in your mind? What's the time frame of this look like? Oh, I think it could move pretty quickly. Um, I think that, um, you know, uh, once uh, we go to that next step and our, uh, our diplomats under the leadership of Secretary Pompeo uh, start pounding out a framework for what what would constitute a real deal, um, I think it could happen in a couple of years. I mean, everything. I think you, right. could, I could, I think you could see major, and, and if Trump and his administration pull this off, it will be one of the greatest accomplishments of any administration in the last, you know, 30, 40 years, right up there with, you know, Ronald Reagan uh, and uh, the tearing down of the Berlin Wall and the Iron Curtain. It's pretty significant, which is pretty significant, and, and and that's a pretty bold statement, you know, from a guy in talk radio and television to say it, but for someone in your position. So as always, uh, as soon as this happened, I thought of you, and I want. I'm glad that you were able to come down and share some knowledge, and I appreciate your time as always uh, on these issues. Well, Mike, ultimately, uh, you know, it, it, it is going to benefit the entire world, not just the United States and our allies in the region, and we need to be skeptical. And we need to make sure that, like I said, we trust but verify, but, but it, is, it is attainable. It is. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I could have said that even six months ago. So it's not mission accomplished, but it is a great first step. Thanks it's, for coming it, down. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll be it. back.